Hey everyone, this is Ross. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at my currents, specifically my red currents. There's also different types of currents out there. There's black currents, there's white currents, there's pink currents. Um, it's a really popular fruit in Europe and it's been banned in the United States for a number of years because it can carry a disease that will then spread to a specific type of pine tree. Um, that really doesn't happen anymore and the ban has been lifted on a huge number of states. So I'm able to grow them here in Pennsylvania. They are still banned, however, in a number of states, so just be careful with that. I know you can get these online very cheap, probably about $10 a plant um, before shipping. And they'll let you know, the nursery will let you know if indeed they are banned. By the way, there's a ton of wind in this corridor, so I apologize if it's uh, a little windy, but these plants actually don't seem to mind the wind. Um, so that's one thing I've really liked about these is that having them in this windy location has not bothered them at all. I also have some over here underneath the Rosianca persimmon, which is pushing probably 20 feet at this point. Um, and underneath it is indeed these red currants and they're even more this one over here is more productive believe it or not than the current i uh am about to show you guys and this one here is a little bit further behind i think because it's it's in a bit of a shadier spot and the soil hasn't really warmed up as much in this location uh, the soil temperature really gets those metabolisms of any plant going a bit quicker so having that right temperature i think would help these guys out but um, for the most part they don't mind being grown in a cold place they don't mind being grown in a climate that has a shorter season like europe you know england's very popular with these you know places like the netherlands and um you know these are a really big popular fruit in those places and again i would just highly recommend growing something in the ribes family so they are also related, I think, to the gooseberry, and they've been crossed with the gooseberry to create something called the jostaberry. Um, so for me, I like all three of them. I'm, bigger, I'm a bigger fan of the gooseberry, and I think I'm gonna be even more of a fan of the jostaberry than all three of them, but I think every year of my life, I'm probably gonna be growing some sort of currant. Um, they're supposed to make really good jam and you can see here they fruit on these strands and what you can do is just pick it off just like that rather than picking each individual berry i think it really saves some time and what you can do is take this whole thing and put this in your mouth and voila but most people don't actually eat them like this they don't eat them fresh they'll process them in some way but if you were it's easy, it's very simple. Just put your lips around the whole cluster of fruits and then pull this strand out. And that's it. You get a nice little burst of tart berry flavor. Um, there's a little bit of astringency in there. Astringency, sorry guys, with some of the fruits that are not as ripe, but for the most part, if they're actually perfectly red, and this is really specifically for the red currants, if they're perfectly red, they're actually not bad. They're not astringent. The sugar levels are quite high. However, this is not gonna be a fruit that you're gonna to wanna to eat. Most people, fresh. You're gonna to wanna to process this in some way. I would say in terms of all the other fruits I grow here, whether that's figs, persimmons, pomegranates, you know, all kinds of weird stone fruits and apples and pears and all kinds of weird berries, raspberries, blackberries, strawberries, I would say, these are probably a six out of 10. You know, my figs are a 10 out of 10. My persimmon is a nine out of 10. My strawberries are probably an eight or a nine. Raspberries, blackberries, probably a seven or an eight. Um, you know, my red currants are not that far away. These are only a six out of 10. Yeah, they're not the highest thing out there, but they're meant to be processed. They're meant to be put in something like a jam, a pie, some sort of cooking um you know you could put this i'm sure with meat you could probably use this as like a lingonberry if you're growing these in like some kind of swedish dish you know uh they have a lot of uses for sure and i think they deserve respect 
and they deserve to be grown. And I said, I think I said this, that I'm going to be growing them probably every year to some degree uh, of my life. Uh, I've also mentioned, I think, that they do pretty well in the shade. They like more moist conditions, um, you know, but they have, in fact, I've heard of this. People have had disease problems on theirs, depending on where they live. Uh, I think they they suffer from some sort of rust or some sort of anthracnose, something like that. Uh, but I haven't had that issue here. Even though I get 40 inches of rain annually, it's very humid here. Mine have had really very few issues um, adjusting and also, you know, maturing. I think a lot of people struggle with these these types of plants, the rives specifically, getting them... Um, you know, to, to a mature size. I think a lot of people really complain about them and wonder, you know, why is my current not really doing anything? Here's actually a, a black current behind the persimmon that we just transplanted out this year. It was doing really well, but it was growing alongside something else. And I decided to take this out, leave the other thing in it, in its place, and then put this one here. And you can see, even after transplanting this, it still has a lot of fruit on it this black currant and the leaves look healthy. It's growing well. It's even mostly in shade. So uh, for me, this is like a, a no brainer plant. Nothing really bothers them except for the birds. Yeah, you can have some disease. You can have some issues getting them, um, you know, established. But uh, for the most part, all I have to do is put a net on them. And this is the, the bird netting I used to have on these plants here before we were, we took it off to do the harvest. Um, and overall, I think the flavor's really good. I want to see what the jam turns out to be. I know black currant jam specifically um, is said to be the best jam you can make, you can eat. Uh, it goes for quite a bit of money. I have had red currant jam before, and I thought it was pretty good, but uh, personally, I think blueberry jam so far is the best, and I wonder if my honeyberry jam is going to be even better. You can also put these guys in liqueurs as well and make yourself maybe even a wine some kind of liquor and re what i'm going to do is put you guys down here because i'm just going to come in here and harvest and uh you know get this job done and show you guys kind of what the results are here if i can so now also i don't think these all really have to be perfect if you're making these into a jam um, you know, you're not eating these fresh. You can get some berries down here that are not quite exactly ready. They are going to give a lot of tartness, a lot of, a lot of flavor. They have quite a complex flavor. So I think it's important to highlight that. And that's really what they're there for. They're not really there to be the sweetest thing. They've got a complex, interesting tartness to them. And that's what they should be used for. Not, you know, not to replace a strawberry or not to replace you know something really sweet so we're just going to come in here and i'm picking off the strands that's all i'm doing and then putting them in the bowl and the whole reason i'm doing this now is because i don't want to have to come in here and do this multiple times you know this is like for me a one a one and done thing i plant this I, I get it established. This is, by the way, these plants you're looking at here, I think they've only been in the ground in this spot for two or three years. This is now their, I think their third spring that they've been going through. Um, also that hasn't, what I haven't mentioned to you guys is uh, they're actually quite early. So today is only June 10th or so. And June 10th is not bad to be getting all this fruit i mean that's that's pretty reasonable i've only been doing this for like a minute and uh i would say my earliest fruit so far is the strawberry followed that up by the honeyberry and then you've got things like gumi you got things like cherries we even have an apricot ripe today and my red currants are sort of in that bag of being among the earliest fruits so it's really cool to see that these will ripen pretty much reliably every year for me. They got no issues, you know, growing them. They're just quite good. Um, I also know somebody in the area who lives in Jersey 
And uh, let me try to get these harvested for you guys so you can see me how I'm harvesting them. And he lives in Jersey and he grows a lot of weird, interesting things. And this, that's what he sells commercially. Um, he goes out of his way to grow weird and interesting things that people uh, have been growing for years that grew up with this stuff. That's usually what you find. And, you know, people who like red currants or people who like currants, they usually grew up with this. Uh, I didn't certainly grow up with this, but I am interested in, in growing weird and, and uh, strange fruits. I want to experience this for myself. And it's nice to be able to grow something that you didn't really set out to expect a whole lot out of, and then you harvest it and you realize, oh, wow, that's actually pretty good. So it's cool to get that experience, and I think uh, it may, you know, worst case scenario, you don't like it, you get rid of it, but something else you tried, you really enjoy. So, um, you know, it's, it's really cool, to, I think, to get this experience. How many, how many times really are you going to be able to do something like this in your life? Um, so that is kind of the video here, guys, and that's the harvest thus far. I think the thumbnail of this video, if you guys want to go back and look at the thumbnail on the channel, I think I'll make the thumbnail just the total harvest from just this one bush. It's three years old, like I said, and I'll let you guys know uh, then what the harvest is like. Maybe I'll even weigh it. So, all right, guys, take care, and uh, we'll see you all soon. All right, bye-bye.